What are you expecting from the first quarter and how do you think everything we've seen in the first quarter of this year will shape the conversation next week? Yeah, um, so we're looking for a pretty strong report. I think the Bloomberg consensus, as you mentioned, is, is two and a half, but, but our lean as well is, is on the higher side of that. And I think the more important thing that we'll be focused on, you know, is just the core measure of GDP, final domestic demand growth, which economists call it. That's going to be incredibly strong. That strips out the volatile uh, trade and uh, inventories categories. And that looks like that's going to be above three. You know, and the thing that we've been really um, highlighting and focusing in is that will be the third quarter in a row that we've gotten core GDP growth of above three, and that's something that we haven't seen since uh, 2014, absent the uh, pandemic-related rebound. So all of this is to say is that GDP in the United States is incredibly strong, and, and that strength has, has continued after uh, 2023. We've seen strong momentum going into to 2024. All of that suggests that inflationary pressures in the economy, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we're, run, we're running at a hot economy here, and it's, it's not really consistent with inflationary pressures further moderating. Do you think that will shape the language in the statement next Wednesday when we open that up at 2 p.m. Eastern time? Is that going to look any different? Yeah, I mean, I certainly I think you could see some changes to the statement, but I think what markets will be more focused on is what Powell says in the press conference. Um, and and his, you know, you, uh, in the past at least, Powell has made reference to the SEP projections, uh, pre prior SEP projections at a non you know SEP meeting, and given us some hints on how he thinks they could change. And we think that's potentially what he could do now: set the stage for more revisions to the SEP that we're going to get in June. You know, say that the inflation forecasts are likely going to have to be revised up and then as a result of that sort of hint at the fact that you could take out maybe one or even two cuts uh, in the forecast for 2024. Tiffany, I hate to do this. I feel kind of a little bit dirty doing this. But is this a pivot to the pivot that we got in December? <laughs> Um, well, it does seem like, in some sense, the, the pivot party from December is over. Um, you know, and I, and I think that's as a result of the inflation trends that we've seen. Um, you know, and, and again, just the economy is just incredibly strong. You know, we have argued, you know, that you know the so-called last mile on the inflation um, in the inflation race is going to be the toughest. You know, and that's just because we have a strong economy, labor markets are tight, um, and that and that just is likely to result in inflation hanging above their target. And really, the question is, is you know, are they okay with that. Um, and it seems like, you know, there is some threshold, uh, maybe we think it's 3%, where they won't be okay with that. But, you know, above three, it's okay. Um, but again, you know, it's it's a bit, you know, monetary policy is a bit of an art and a science here. So, um, you know, I think the art is that, you know, they don't really need to be cutting. They're, they're not, they shouldn't be in a rush. Um, and so really, it's up to them to choose uh, when they start to do it.